Hey folks, just a quick one today. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make this procedural pothole material. It's pretty straightforward. There's not too many nodes involved. So without further ado, let's get to it. So open up Blender. I'm gonna delete the default cube. I'm gonna delete the default lamp. I'm also in layout mode over here. So I'm gonna take my cursor to the bottom left until I see a crosshair. I'm gonna left click and drag and open up a new window. I'm gonna change this to the shader editor. I'll then hit N to close the end panel. I'm gonna hit Shift A. I'm going to go to mesh and I'm going to choose plane. I'm going to tap into edit mode. I'm going to hit S 10 and then hit enter. And that will scale it up by 10. I'll then tab out of edit mode. Down in the shader editor, I'm going to click new. And I'm going to rename this material to pothole material. I'll just increase this window. I'm also in viewport shading over here. I might just disable my overlays. I'm going to zoom in. I'll then hit shift A. I'm going to go to texture and I'll choose noise texture. I'll change it from 3D to 4D. I'm going to turn up the detail to 15 and I'll turn the roughness up to 0.75. I'll then navigate to the top left. I'm going to go to edit preferences and I'm going to choose add-ons and search for node and then enable the node wrangler here. Once you've enabled that, click this button, click save preferences. Now that we've got the node wrangler enabled, I'm going to select the noise texture. I'll then hit Control T and that will add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. I'm just going to box select these nodes here. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to hit G. Just drag these across over to here. I'll grab this noise texture. I'm going to hit Control Shift D to duplicate while maintaining the connection to the previous node. And I'll change the scale to 10. I'll then change the W factor for the top noise texture to something random. And I'll change the W factor for the bottom noise texture to something random. Let's just increase this window. I'll then hit Shift A. I'm going to go to Vector and I'm going to choose Bump. Shift A. I'm going to go to Color and I'm going to choose Mix Color. I'm going to set the mix type to Multiply. I'll plug the factor from this top noise texture into socket A and the factor from the bottom noise texture into socket B. I'll then change the mix factor to 100%. I'm going to plug the result from that into the height of the bump node and the normal socket from the bump node into the normal socket of the principal BSDF. We're getting some bump here. Excellent. Now I want to colorize this. Let me just shimmy this node across over to here. In fact, I just might box select these three nodes here. I'm going to hit Control J and that'll add a frame. I'll then hit F2 and we'll rename the frame to Concrete Noise. I'll then plug the result from this color mix into the base color of the principal BSDF. That will give us a bit of color variation. Excellent. Let me just box select these. I'm going to hit G. Just bring these across over to here. I'll just drag this across over to here. Excellent. I'll then hit Shift A. I'm going to go to Texture and I'm going to choose Noise Texture. I'm going to pop that up here. I'll then plug the vector from this mapping node into the vector of the Noise Texture. I'm going to change it from 3D to 4D. I'm going to change the scale to 10 and I'll change the W factor to something random. I'll increase the detail to 15 but for this one I'm going to keep the roughness set to 0.5. I'll then drag this factor from this noise texture into the roughness of the principal BSDF. Temporarily I'm going to hold down control right click and drag and disconnect the bump from the principal BSDF. I'll then hit shift A. I'm going to go to converter and choose color ramp and I'll pop that in between there. I'm going to drag this black flag all the way across to let's say around about there and I'll drag the white flag all the way across to around about there. Now we should be getting some reflections here. Excellent. So I'm just going to tone down the colour of the material just so we can see the reflections of the puddles a bit better. So I'm going to hit Shift A, I'm going to go to Converter and I'm going to choose Colour Ramp and I'm going to pop that between the Mixed Colour and the Principal BSDF. Let's just zoom into that. I'm going to drag this flag across over to here. I'll drag this one over to here. Maybe something around about there perhaps. And I'll increase the brightness of this flag to maybe, let's go for 0.05 on the value. And for this one, I'm just going to drag this down to around about there maybe. Maybe I can give it a slight bluish tone around about there. Maybe take the saturation down and maybe I'll darken this one down one more. Excellent. There we go, you can kind of see what's happening now. So now, if I connect the normal socket from this bump node into the normal socket of the principal BSDF, we'll get our bump back. But this poses a problem because now we've got bump on the puddles. And so now we need to mask out the bump from these puddles. That's easy enough. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, I'm gonna to go to color and I'll choose mix color. And I'll pop that in between the mix color and the bump node. I'll then drag this mix color into socket B. I'm gonna keep socket A set to 100% pure white. And I'll drag the color socket from this mix color into the factor of this mix color node. There we go. Excellent. The bump is a bit strong. And in order to adjust that, we literally just click this white value. We tone it down so we can bring it down and we can take it into the negative values as well. So we'll just have that really subtle. 
maybe something around there i also want to be able to change the color of the puddles as well so i'm just going to drag this color ramp across here i'll then hit shift a i'm going to go to color and i'll choose mix color and i pop that in between the color ramp and the principal bsdf we're going to switch this to socket b i'll then drag the color from this color ramp into the factor of this mix color node so now we should be able to change the color of the puddles excellent i'm going to tone this down around about there I want to be able to control the bump for the edges of the potholes and the surface of the ground separately so in order to do that so we already know that socket a controls the strength of the bump for the rim of the potholes whereas this node here this controls the concrete noise so this would control the overall bump for the ground material so we could do this several ways we could have a contrast node we could add a color ramp but i'm going to add a mixed color node so i'm going to hit shift a i'm going to go to color and i'm going to choose mixed color and i'll pop that in between these two mixed color nodes we're going to switch it from socket a to socket b and for socket a i'm going to turn this to 100 percent white so now this factor will control the bump for the ground plane so now maybe i can turn this down slightly and we'll decrease the bump for the ground in fact we'll tune the ground first so it's only slight bump there and we'll increase this factor here okay we're going to get better results in cycles so i'm just going to switch my render engine from ev to cycles and in the shader editor i'm going to change it from object to world i'm going to add an hdri to my scene so if you open up your web browser type in polyhaven and then go to polyhaven.com you can hover over assets go to hdris and then select outdoor hdris i'm going to be using one called driving school which is this one here so i've already downloaded mine so you can click that you then select your resolution i'm going to use an 8k for this and then click download so once you've done that select your background node hit Control t and that will add an environment texture a mapping and a texture coordinate node i'll then click open i'm going to navigate to my hdris there's mine driving school i've also got the 16k version i'm just going to use 8k just so it loads quicker i'll then switch over to rendered view and i'm going to change strength to let's say two let's see what that looks like i'm just going to look for the direction of my sun okay the reason why I want the sun opposite is because I want to calculate the bump properly. I want to make sure that these are indented rather than poking outwards. So I'll go back to my shader and change it from world to object. And now we can fine tune these settings a bit more. So I'm going to reduce the factor on this node to reduce the bump on the ground plane. Maybe I'll set it to 0.25. I can then fine tune this one. Okay, maybe we can do a bit of housekeeping before we move on actually. I'm just going to click file we'll go to save as and i'm going to save my project as like and subscribe thanks folks you absolute legends then i'll click save as so with these two top nodes i'm going to hit Control j and that will add a frame i'll then hit f2 and i'll rename it to puddle noise i'll just box select these two nodes i'm gonna hit g just drag this across i'll select this node i'll then hit Control j to add a frame i'm gonna hit f2 and i'm gonna rename this to pothole bump i'll then select this node i'm gonna hit Control j i'll then hit f2 and i'll rename this to ground bump maybe we can control these with value nodes so i'm gonna hit shift a i'm gonna go to input and i'm gonna choose value i'll then hit shift d to duplicate that I'm just going to click this white swatch just to see what value we've got maybe i'll set that to 0.7 so now i know that this value here is going to be 0.7 and i'll plug that value into socket a now we can control the pothole bump with this value here in fact i'm going to drag it into the frame and for this value this is going to plug into the factor here so the factor is set to 0.25 so i'll set the value to 0.25 i'll then plug this value into the factor of this node and then i'll drag this into the frame so now we can reduce this value and that will reduce the bump for the ground or increase it so i'm going to keep a value of 0.25 i think for a better interpolation type i'm going to go to this puddle noise and i'm going to change the interpolation type from linear to ease and maybe i'll also do the same for this color ramp here change it from linear to ease i'm just going to neaten up these nodes quick We've just got a couple more features to add to this. So I'm going to box select these nodes here. I'm going to hit G. 
we're just going to drag these across over to there. I'll then drag the color socket from this color ramp into socket A of this mixed color node. I'm going to hit shift A, I'm going to go to color, choose RGB curves. I'll then pop that in between the color ramp and socket A of the mixed color node. We'll just drag this up to round about there. I'll then drag this down just to make the puddles a bit darker. I'm going to hold down shift, right click and drag just to add this control point here. I'll just hit G and bring this over to there. I'm going to box select these nodes over here and their frames. I'm going to hit G, just drag these across over to there. I'll hold down shift, right click and drag just to add a control point. I'll hit G and we'll bring this over to here. I'll just select this color ramp. I'm going to hit G, we'll just drag this across over to there. Excellent. So the reason I did these control points is because if we want to inject an image texture into this, this makes it seamless. For example, if I hit shift A, I'm going to go to texture and I'll choose image texture. I'll then hit control T and that will add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. I'll click open. I'll locate an image texture. So you could add concrete, you could add asphalt, a road or whatever. But just as an example, I'm going to show you this dirt road texture. So I'm going to select that texture. I'll click open. So before I connect this up to the circuit, I'm just going to make this a bit easier. So I hold down shift, right click and drag, and that'll add another control point. So we know where this is going to go when we disconnect it. And I'll do the same over here. Hold down shift, right click and drag. I'll just hit G, bring this across over to there. And now when we disconnect this, we know where it's going to go. So to disconnect these nodes, I'm going to hold down control, right click and drag, and that'll disconnect those noodles. Hold down shift, right click and drag, and that'll disconnect the noodles there. So now all we have to do, is connect this image texture to this noodle and we'll connect this image texture to this noodle. So now you can see we've got the image texture in place, we've got the potholes and with this color ramp we can tone down the texture underneath the puddles. Excellent. Okay, I'm just going to disconnect that so I'm going to hold down control, right click and drag. I'll connect up the original procedural material and I'll do the same down here. I'm going to hold down control, right click and drag, disconnect that and then reconnect the original procedural material. I'm going to upload this blend file to my Patreon, so if you join me as a free member, you'll be able to download this file if you need to. It won't have this image texture here because I don't own the rights to this, but you can download any image texture from cgtextures.com or polyhaven.com. That's the tutorial in a nutshell. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please click like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. Have a great day, level up, and thanks for watching.